What's up, vegan body coach family? It's been a while. We're back. Episode 12. This is a goodie. This is with Natalie Richards from Prep Plant Based Meals, which is a New Zealand company that specializes in pre packaged meals. Nutritious, healthy, uh, protein packed, super good for when you're on the go and busy. Now, Natalie is a super fun chick. Really enjoy hanging out with her. She's authentic and real, like as real as they come. Um, just wholeheartedly her, you know. She just lives her truth. And in this episode, we just keep it super real, super authentic. And we discuss her journey from becoming a truck driver and prepping her own meals and then prepping for other people and then deciding to launch her own business, which has now uh, won a bunch of awards here in New Zealand, which is really inspiring. And you know, in this episode, we discuss the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, going from, you know, the highs of winning awards to the lows of having massive setbacks and dealing with finances and all these types of things. But we also discuss a lot around food preparation, how to make meals taste good, how to make prep an easy thing to do on a, on a weekly basis. Um, we have a really fun chat about a lot of different topics. Also, guys, be sure to listen to the whole episode all the way through to the end because I'm going to give you a little detail about a little cooking tutorial video me and Nat did uh, all around making crispy tofu, which you can grab and check out as well. So here we go. Episode 12 with Natalie Richards. You are listening to the Vegan Body Coach Podcast. All about optimizing your strength, fitness, and physique through a plant-focused diet. My name is Jackson Burton, and I'm a nutrition and training coach for vegans, the plant-centric, and plant-curious. I'm sitting down with athletes, experts, and influencers around the world to inspire you to create your best vegan body yet. Alrighty, Nat. So, welcome to the Vegan Body Coach Podcast. Thank you, Jax. It's a pleasure to be out in your beautiful home. On a beautiful rainy day in Auckland. Yeah, it's lovely. It's snuggly in here. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. You've got the fire going and um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful home you got here. So thank you for allowing us to come out. It's okay. Um, but yeah, I did want to have a, a good chat about your journey today and, you know, sort of what you've done to get here and sort of, you know, what, what obstacles you've overcome um, and then your viewpoint on a few things and we can chat more about the cooking and maybe some tips for people as well. Um, but as a quick intro, why don't we have a chat about sort of you know, what? how did it all start for you? Maybe how was life growing up? Were you always into plant-based nutrition or even eating plant-based at all? Maybe a little bit of the backstory would be cool. Cool. Okay, well, uh, life growing up was good. You know, in West Auckland on the farm, paddock car at 12 years old. Oh, <laughs> so good. I love that. Um, yeah, I mean, primary school was down the road. It was a good school, high school. Mm-hmm. Um, Mum and dad bought us up uh, just on fish and chicken, uh, so no red meat. We've never had any red meat or pork or anything uh, and always really healthy. I remember um, mum, you know, making our school lunches and like a snack would be like mung beans. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> different. Like, yeah, not like chips or chocolate or anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I never really um, – I never really was into lollies or anything like that. So always really, really healthy, athletic. It was a good, it was a good upbringing, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Did cool. you have some like kickback from from friends and stuff when you're rocking up with mung beans? No, nah, but I used to get the boys to swap uh, the mung beans for their chocolate. Sometimes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I didn't get much kickback. No, it was good. It was yeah. Good. So, so that's really interesting. What was the what was the reason that your parents brought you up just chicken and fish? So, Dad read. A lot of books mm-hmm. and I know that when he met mum, he uh, influenced her to uh, stop eating red meat because uh, he read – this is like way before the internet and everything. This is way back, yeah. Yeah, totally. he, he just read what red meat does to the body and everything and he's always been into his health um, – so, yeah, and mum has always been an amazing cook in the kitchen and yep. always, uh, yeah, I suppose they just were really into feeling amazing and uh, influencing that uh, into dishes on the uh, dinner table for their kids. Cool. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. So they were obviously very conscious early on. Did mm-hmm. you feel like that was a contributor for you to sort of – go more into a, a more of a plant-based lifestyle? 100%. That and I'm Cancerian, so I'm obsessed with food. I gotcha. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. That's definitely uh, – I've always been into cooking. Uh, I've always been into healthy eating. Like 
I've traveled around the world and one of my most favorite things to do is, you know, go to the supermarket and check out all of the uh, produce. Check what and they got. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always been something that I've loved and a big passion of mine. So I, I reckon definitely it's stemmed from mum and dad yeah. and the way that I've been brought up. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So, so what led you to... Um, would you say you're vegan now? Would you say you're just plant-based or how, how would you sort of describe that for yourself? Okay, so I would say that I'm mostly vegan, sometimes have a little bit of dairy, um, but I don't consciously go and purchase it gotcha. with money because I don't want to support any gotcha. of those. Um, yeah, any, I don't want to support that industry like yeah. that. But, you know, if I was at like a wedding and there was only a vegetarian lasagna right. available, then yeah, I would like have cool. that. Um, yeah, so that's my vision mm-hmm. for prep, like for my business is mm-hmm. for everyone to eat a more plant-based diet and feel the benefits of, you know, how I feel every day. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, That's yeah. super cool. So maybe we'll wind it back a little bit and go, um, like I know you were into, you were a truckie, right? So you yes. were trucking, which is, yeah. which is super cool because I... I did a bunch of that in the army myself, so did I've you? kind of got a little bit of a um, trucky mind, I guess, um, in a sense. But I want to go back and say, you know, how did you get to that point where you were were you trucking, and then were you sort of eating plant based at that stage, or? Okay, well, I mean, how I got into trucks, which is actually really cool. Um, when I was living in, because I lived in Melbourne for about nine years in Australia, mm. yeah, cool. and I remember one of my friends, she. Um, she decided to drive big semis like over in Perth and she was like, Nat, you could do it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to get my truck license. And I got my truck license and then I never ended up using it because I ended up like managing a really cool bar and like, you know, just life just got busy uh-huh. doing that stuff. And then I ended up um, traveling and living in like the Caribbean and then London for a while. And then when I came home, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like, and my cousin was just like, Nat, you've got your truck license. Why don't you come and drive for the car? distribution group doing you know transporting cars yeah so that's how i started doing oh, that cool. yeah it was cool um it was in london that i started being like vegan uh just because of the, like I, I started eating chicken like i was eating chicken a little bit over there and then i was just like nah i don't feel right like i know that this is an industry over here like the animal agriculture is just like I didn't want to support that and um it was my friend Lorna actually she was like I'm gonna go vegan and that was like a word that was like oh vegans is intense you know like they're like like vegans like hippie like what do they even eat how do they even eat and um I was like okay cool and because I loved cooking anyways I just started googling like vegan recipes and then when I came home I was like fully like cool plant-based I need to – I was working 70 hours a week on the trucks. And wow. so every Sunday I had to make sure that my meal prep was done because there was no options on the road or anything like that. Uh, so, yeah, I'd go down to the farmer's market and I'd get all of my delicious produce and then I'd come back and for a few hours I'd cook like my week's worth of meals and I was set and I could do those 13, 14-hour days like with so much energy cool. and – yeah, it was really cool. It was really, it was really good. It's um, I think it's like a, it's a real almost cliche of the trucky diet, which is like one hundred percent rock up <laughs> to the the bakery or like the local yeah. pit stop and grab a, a pie, pie. <laughs> uh, you know, steak and cheese pie, a V and like a sausage roll, you yeah. know. And it was exactly the same thing for the army boys because we'd be trucking through you know New Zealand and wherever we'd stop, it'd be if we were allowed to actually yeah. go to a shop that is. Um, it would be, you know, it would be pies and it'd be V's and, you know. And I don't understand it because if I did eat that, I would feel so lethargic uh-huh. and I would, you know, at 3 p.m. probably nearly not off at the wheel. So, yes. I, yeah, I don't know how those truckies, I, think there's a I don't know how there's those big truckies that yeah. like eat that diet. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's pretty dangerous. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it is the typical trucky like physique is someone who is very overweight and, and you know you're literally not moving yeah all day long but you're taking in calories as if you're an athlete you know you're taking in you know a, a highly calorically dense pie yeah and a full sugar v and all these types of things and then you just sit you yeah know? It's, it's insane. crazy um but yeah it's a, it's a totally different lifestyle to what you're doing now which is yeah which is why it's such a cool story yeah um, i feel like it's good to influence people as well like uh, that they can change and do whatever they want honestly i loved driving the trucks i really did yeah. but i remember 
when it started to feel a little bit like, oh, I've got to get up. Oh, what is that? 3.45 a.m. alarm. Um, you know, I, I just remember it not being as enjoyable. And then I started thinking, okay, what do I want to do? I would love to work in a vegan catering factory, you know, just vegan. I knew I, knew I didn't want to. Uh, I knew I wanted to work with food, but no meat, no dairy. And I was like, right. And I did some research. I was like, okay, there is no vegan catering business. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And then I started manifesting as I was driving the trucks, like just literally working with food, vegan food. And yeah, and I started doing Bikram yoga uh, at a studio in town. And I remember I posted a photo of all my produce I got from the farmer's market and then another picture of all my meals that I'd created out of it. And it got like over 100 likes or something. And I showed the owner of the yoga studio and she was like, oh, my God, can you please do that for the new people coming into the studio? And I was like – oh my God, I'm already doing 70 hours a week on the trucks. Yes, I can. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, definitely. Uh, so I started, you yeah, know, trucking and on the weekends uh, doing meal prep. Uh, yeah, that's wow. how prep was born. Yeah, wow. it, was, it was cool. So did you, when you, um, you know, you're obviously well, relatively skilled within the kitchen. Yeah. Um, so that, where'd that come from? So that just comes from a passion of cooking like my favorite thing to do when i was living in melbourne was be in the kitchen with a glass of red wine with drum and bass playing I love it. and <laughs> entertaining like my friends for cool. a dinner party so it obviously just naturally yeah. came to me and i every sunday when i loved being in the kitchen doing my meal prep that's how i knew i was like i've got to do something with food i've got to do something with cooking cool. because i just love it and it doesn't feel like work like i'd spend yeah yeah, I love that. So those two days off that I had for off the trucks, it didn't feel like work. Yeah, because I was creating, you know, beautiful yeah. food for people to eat, and the feedback was awesome. And it was just, yeah, it's just that I started getting busier, busier. Yeah. yeah, I love that though because that's I think that's the way a lot of businesses should start and probably do start, especially ones that are more passion projects. Is that it's just like a natural progression. Yeah, you know, it comes from it comes from the heart. Really, it's like, hey, I'm I'm, I'm passionate about this thing. Um, I love doing it. I'm good at it. Like it has to be like a, a intersection of you know what you're skilled at, but what you love, and then how you can bring value yeah. to um, society. You know, in some way. Exactly, and um, because all the food I was making was so natural ingredients and healthy, like the feedback is everybody was just like, "I feel so good. I feel amazing." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my god, it's working!" Because I feel so good and amazing, and wow. now other people are starting to feel so good yeah. and amazing. So it was really cool. That's it. Mm. That must be a pretty incredible feeling for you knowing that you're impacting other people's lives not just like for their taste buds but for their health and yeah it feels like uh it's like getting a bonus you know all the feedback every week is is i love it so much like i've had feedback where um diabetes has been reversed Uh arthritis has been reversed iron levels are through the roof of old meat eaters that have been you know eating my plant-based food for Eight months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff that, yeah, that gives you that real high feeling and yeah. like you're doing something that's actually worth getting up for. Well, yeah. I mean, you're having people live the best that they could. You're having people, yeah, feel incredible from the inside out. That is that is so cool. 100%. Yeah. Awesome. So if, I mean, so did you have, you know, any kind of lessons in the kitchen or did your mom teach you anything or were you just going trial and error? Okay, I remember being 21 or 22 in Melbourne and my friend Robin, she showed me how to crush a piece of garlic like with a knife. Yes. And she's like, that's how you get the shell off. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my like, God, oh, yeah. that's amazing. And then, yeah, and then I, I, I remember that that's the only lesson. Everything else is self-taught. It's wow. literally um, Googling Mm -hmm. vegan recipes and then just trial and error trial and error um yeah so and i do quite simple cooking it's quite simple cooking like it's not like anything that i would have learned from you know like a course or anything like that um but obviously with vegan food it's like all of the flavors that you use all of like you know the herbs the spices everything like that and then you make incredible food, so yeah. it's not even that hard. <laughs> I love it. I think I, I, I think what's um, I, I chat about this a little bit with some people, and I'm like, you know, people that are 
and we'll chat about this a little bit further in the conversation, but people that are um, new to the kitchen, basically, like they've grown up having their, their parents do all the meals and they've never thought twice about how those meals are actually, you know, created. Mm. And so it's the real, like the simple, simple stuff that any chef would just look straight past. And I relate it back to like being in the gym. Like when I'm with, when I'm touring a new client and they just have zero idea about anything, I'm like, oh, that's right. People don't know this stuff. Like this yeah. is to me is so simple and so clear cut, but it's the same thing for the kitchen. Like even when I started doing a, a few meals for myself here and there, it's like, you don't know just the basic, basic stuff that actually helps to actually make a meal taste good yeah. Um, or how to prepare it or how to get it out hot and all these sorts of things. Yeah, I remember one guy like took a little photo of his – recently he took a little photo of his like oven gauge and he was like, which setting do I put it on? And I was like, oh, my gosh, yeah, you know? like totally. Yeah, it's like doing anything for the first time. 100%. Uh, you don't know anything, but then the more and more that you do it, you become a pro. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's a really big point. So – for yourself, what's the um? Well, we'll go back a little bit and say like, okay, cool. So you did the did the yoga stuff. You're starting to create meals for them, and then there obviously became a point where you decided, okay, I'm going to go all in on this. And yeah. then and then, so what was that journey like? And did you see some um, um, some big struggles or roadblocks to actually kick off in the first place? Because a new business is is a very tough thing to get through. Yeah, it is. I remember I went over to the UK for a holiday for six weeks. And I, because I was, you know, working full time on the trucks and then the weekends prep. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to make this work. I've got to make this work. How am I going to make this work? And I, I was like, I reckon it'll come to me when I'm on holiday. Yep. So yeah, went over uh, and then I was in um, Holdren's uh, Arcade, which is in South London. It's just like a little alleyway and it's got all these little shops and like radio stations and it's really oh, cool. Yeah. And there's a little tiny little like it could only have like two people sitting in it hole in the wall style um cafe and it was a chick my age that was making caribbean um uh vegan food wow. like the most amazing stuff in a tiny little one meter by one meter I love it. yeah like one meter by one meter like area and i was like oh my gosh i can do that at my place because i was living in Graylin at the time with a one meter by one meter kitchen yeah and I was like, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. I will just give have my notice in for the trucks, which was so scary because, you know, it's good money. And yeah. I was just like, oh, my gosh, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to do this. Uh, you know, just go all it's in. It's a big leap. Yeah. yeah, especially when you don't have a commercial kitchen or yeah. anything, you know, or even – the you don't know how much money you're going to get every week and that's scary you know like you literally just got to put all your faith into this next step and so when I came home I was like right I'm gonna do it handed in my notice started prep full time you know obviously with flyers like flyering and um posting on all the community pages like oh, cool. Instagram and Facebook which is great free advertising mm -hmm. you know um and then word of mouth started getting out. Yeah. More people told more people. And also it was 100% plant-based and New Zealand is so not 100% plant-based. So I had to, you know, like literally get people to eat healthy food through trying it. And then everyone that pretty much ordered like always came back. Yeah. So that yeah. was really cool. I and mean, there's a massive sign of success when you were getting repeat customers. 100%. Yeah. So that was really cool. Uh, and then I started getting busier and busier and then I remember my ex-boyfriend left to go to the UK and I was kind of like, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm at max capacity in my little one meter by one meter kitchen. Maybe I should just throw in the towel and go to Melbourne and work for my mate's dad and just, you know, like just, you, that would be the easier option. Go back to Melbourne. I love living in Melbourne. Yeah. And then it was my friend Dan I spoke to him and I was like, I think I'm going to go. And Dan was like, look, Nat, he's an amazing chef. He was just like, look, I'll move back up to Auckland and I will help you. I will, you know, cook for you and become part of prep. And I was like, okay, okay, cool. Well, we can't do it in the one meter by one meter kitchen. <laughs> and he was he was like, just look for a commercial kitchen. And I was like, oh, my God, okay. They're like a thousand bucks a week to rent. Yeah. For the first kitchen I looked at on Trade Me – it, it was uh, to buy and even in the little description it was like would be perfect for a ready-made meal business and I rang the guy up straight away and I was like can I please come and look at it and he was like okay I've got to get my wife to meet you as well and then I went out there and they were just like we love you we want you to have this kitchen like 
sort out the money and stuff, which I had to do with, with the loan in the bank and everything. Right. Um, took me about six weeks because yeah. that's a process in itself, writing yeah. out a business plan and all of oh, that stuff, huge. which my business coach helped me with. Awesome. Um, yeah, and then they waited six weeks for me to get the money together and they had so many people like offering the money and everything to do it straight away. And they were like, no, we want to go with Nat. She's wow. the next Nadia Lim. Like, oh, yeah. Love it, yeah. And yeah, so then I had the commercial kitchen. I had the chef and wow. then I was just like, right, we need to elevate. And so we just, uh, it was really good. It was so cool. It was just Dan and me cooking and creating and I could do a lot of, so with Dan cooking, I could do a lot of the marketing and exposure and cool. getting out. And yeah, yeah so that was cool. Uh, we had a company, um, well, yeah, it didn't come without its hurdles because we had a company down in Christchurch uh, essentially kind of knock on us uh, for not being registered yet. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And they tried to get us like shut down wow. and they slandered us online. Um, they were on, another meal prep company? Yeah, oh, yeah, geez. yeah. With the, on the Auckland and Vegan Facebook page, oh, like God. saying all this stuff. And then the Auckland and Vegan Facebook page like kind of allowed it, which really, yeah. that's when I was kind of like, whoa, vegans are, yeah. they can be really mean, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not supportive of yeah. all businesses. And this was, I had, this is like, the first time that I was like, whoa, this mm. is like a dog eat dog world. Um, I've got someone gunning to get me shut down. But then because we were doing everything completely right, we just weren't signed off yet. Mm. Um, they didn't shut us down at all, but they actually changed a lot of rules to make it easier for a ready-made meal business to uh, get a food control plan oh, wow. and – we can't, it changed the whole structure of yeah. how Ministry of Primary Industries work with frozen meals. Um, so it was really kind of like instead of, you know, waiting seven months and paying $30,000 because we'd already started it, we right. kind of just flew through wow. because we were, we had the knowledge and we were doing it right. I was still, I felt in my head I was still seeing if prep was even going to work, you yes, know, yeah, like, sure. yeah. yeah, and um. So that was like shame to them. Um, <laughs> uh, and the whole like getting the food control plan, that was quite intense. But I was literally just like on the phone every day to them. Like I've never done any of this before. I don't know what to do. You guys aren't telling me what to do because yeah. there's so many new rules and all of this yeah. and all of that. Uh, but we got there in the end and we um, – it was really amazing when we got verified. And they – the verifier said that it was the best uh, recall system he'd ever seen in any business. And wow. I was just like, yay. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, my friend Candice came to uh, help out and start working and she, uh, yeah, completely changed like the whole structure of the, like the barcode system and, and, and the batch numbers and all of that and wow. and she put everything all over the walls. So the um, verification that should have taken eight hours ended up only taking like a couple hours because everything he would have asked to see was already there. Like, oh, wow. And he was just like, this is awesome. Oh, you so guys good. are doing so good. And he yeah. was, he at the end he said, Nat, you inspire me. Wow. And I was just like, wow. yes. Yeah. So there was so many actually big positives that came from this whole initial slandering by another company. And yeah, I mean, it was scary. I remember yeah. I took prep off the Auckland Vegan Facebook page. Yeah. I was like, right, I don't want to be a part of you guys and encouraging that sort of stuff I because yeah. I was just so positive and everything and it's cool I'm doing well now you know like we're, we've got we're getting through the pandemic yeah. like I yeah I'm always a big believer in putting out what you get you know you'll get back what you put out and mm -hmm. It was so scary though. It was a yeah. lot of tears and I was really scared because I just got on this loan and yeah. like all of this. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Instead of them like ringing me up and being like, hey, you should do this. It was like knock, knock, knock on the door. We're going to potentially shut you down with a $50,000 fine. Yeah. I didn't and realize it was so serious, and that's what I like. That's what I was dealing with. Well, it's almost like we chatted about before with the whole tall poppy syndrome, spe specifically in New Zealand. Like they saw you were doing well. Oh, it's competition, unbelievable. Let's, and it's it's really frustrating because if they were they plant based, so as well? they're one hundred percent plant based. And the weird thing was, is I was already buying their food, and I was telling everyone out of Auckland yeah, to, to get their there. food yeah. because I don't believe in tall poppy syndrome. I believe in creating a plant-based vegan movement and everyone moving towards it and supporting all businesses yeah. Yeah. and 
Candice and me, yeah, we do a prep weekly review. We mm-hmm. try and do it every week where we go and we find something plant-based to eat and we post about the business and, you know, like it's not competition for nah. us. There is a lot of money in New Zealand. There's a lot of people that want to be healthy in New Zealand. There's enough for everybody. Yeah, I love that. And if you try and, you know, knock down other people, I mean, it's obviously not going to work because yeah. other people are going to outshine you. Yeah, for sure. Mm. And it, it just comes back to like, it's it's... I mean, for some people, it's all about individual gain and like, how can I advance my business? But I think for a lot of us, and I hope this is the, the case for a lot of the vegan community, is that it's it's more about creating positive change. And creating there's, positive a, change. there's a much larger, um, yeah. there's, a, there's a huge motivating factor behind this whole thing, aside from just gaining something financially. Well, well exactly. This, because you know how I felt. And... 90% of our clients are meat eaters. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't even muck around with the vegans. I'm just like, yep. whatever. Yep. You guys can get my food if you want or not. I don't care. Um, it's all the meat eaters that I know that every meal that they're eating of prep, it's not an animal that they're eating. Yep. And that is so rewarding. And, yeah, it's cool because they keep coming back. Yeah, they love it. Or, so or cool. they want to learn more about, like, um, how to cook. Like, uh, you know, so we post up so many recipes. Every Monday we have a Meatless Monday recipe that yeah. we that goes out. On the website there's so many recipes, so easy cool. recipes, and a little bit more technical recipes. Yeah. So it's cool. That's literally what I'm about. I don't want to be, you know – it's cool. I mean, literally, there's enough money coming in. Everybody's happy. I'm happy. Uh, yeah, I don't want to – I would never want to shut down anyone or yeah. do anything. I would never do what happened to me. But it was a great learning curve so early on. My dad said, he was like, Nat, you were like, you know, up, 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 up. Something had to give. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sweet. And it was that. And we got through it. And that was pretty horrific. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. And Dan, like, you know, we, we, we worked hard and now Candace is on board and cool. we're all like doing good crew. things. Yeah. It's, it's, but it's the same. Like, it's every small business just gets hit with all these things initially because no one knows anything. Like, yeah. you know, you go into business like because, well, hopefully because you have a passion for something like you did and you just start doing it. And then you have to figure out these things as you go and people are expecting you to know this and to know that. And you're like, I don't know. Like, they didn't teach me this in school. Like, they just taught me algebra or whatever. It's like, yeah. I don't know about taxes. I don't know about all this. It's like there's just so much, so much that goes learning into curve, it. right? And yeah. I think that's one of the enjoyable processes of running a business is that you. It's the it's the it's the little learning curves along the way. It is, and I'm a big believer in teaching something to learn something. So um, I learned that in a marketing company that I worked for in the UK. Um, so one of our my good friends wants to start a ready made meal business with meat. And I'm just like, cool, babe, I've got so much information for you. I like, you know, I want to help her everything. I don't see her as direct competition, yeah. like I said, because there's so much goodness to go around. Uh, but yeah, I, I, and then from me teaching her everything, it's reinstalling what I've learned in my head. Uh, and it's cool. It's, it's good. Cool. And, I, and I actually enjoy teaching about business. Yeah, I, I love that. that. Yeah, I realize now that, yeah, maybe I could start another business one day or another, you know, because I, I enjoy that build up and, um, yeah, just teach it because there was nobody to tell me what to do. No one. Yeah. The only people I could probably ask was those people who bloody... Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, and, yeah, it totally wasn't going to be asking them anything. Uh, but, yeah, so I, I always remember thinking if anybody wants to do something like this, I am going to be there to help them because I knew what it felt like to be lost and yeah. stuck and like, yeah. I love that. Yeah, as battle won. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Yeah, now you can give back in, in many different ways. Yeah. With, with your sort of target market, you said it's 90% meat eaters. How are they finding prep and how are they, you know, what's the, are they receptive to trying it for the first time or like, what, what what motivates them to actually try a meal without meat? I think it was awesome when the Game Changers came out, yeah. that documentary. That was incredible. We were like, boom, skyrocket. Wow. And it was all like, you know, big heavy boys that were coming up to the kitchen and just be like, we just watched the doco. I was like, okay, cool, try this. Um, cool. I love it. And I think word of mouth is the best thing. So you've got all of them telling everyone, their work colleagues, their friends, their family, um, a massive bit of feedback we get is uh, I didn't even miss the meat. 
because we create plant-based meats. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the meat fantasy has got like the mints from yes. the TVP, yeah. uh, the textured vegetable protein. Um, yeah, Dan's incredible at that in the kitchen. Like he can create these meals that taste like meat. Satan, he makes his own Satan. Yeah, I love it. Melt in your mouth like beef, you That's know. So good. Um, not that I know what it's like. I've never had it. Yeah, have you actually no. never tried beef? No, nah, never. Wow. Never. Oh no, beef I have. And a little bit of lamb and kangaroo once. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was going to say, you didn't go to like a friend's birthday party and they gave you a Big Mac and you're like, oh, I'll just do it. I'll try it. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, yeah. I was just a big on chicken and fish and all mm. of that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I just feel that it, it, it's word of mouth and uh, leading by example of healthiness. Like, I don't preach in any way about veganism. I did when I first started being vegan. I was right. so angry at the world. And yeah. I was just like, oh, my God, look at all these slaughterhouse images yeah. and all of that. And I totally, like, I I was doing that. And there was a, a little response of people being like, I had no idea. Oh, my God. But mm-hmm. I realized when I stopped doing that and just focusing on health and uh, – uh, literally being a walking example of, um, you know, plant-based goodness, yep. Yep. that that is so much better. Like so many people, so many meat eaters are just like, wow, I want to look and feel like her and mm. all of that. Um, so that's kind of the way that I go down for that. Yeah, I think it definitely, it speaks volumes when you just, you know, you lead by example and you and you say, hey, look, this is the way I do things. This is, you know, kind of, you can give some reasons of why you do it. Mm. Um telling a story like this is how i feel like this is why i did it um not so much hey you should but more this is what i yeah am about and um i don't know if you've heard of um, melanie joy before no she's she does all this incredible um she's got some incredible books i've yet to read but um i've just watched some of her lectures on effective communication for for veganism oh um, awesome i'll definitely check it yeah, out yeah it's really good because she talks about all of that kind of stuff of how to how to, you know, share a story about, you know, what you're doing and, and why you're doing it and in order to evoke a response from somebody else without, you know, shoving it down their throat type thing. Cool. Because inevitably, like whenever I go to a party or for some reason, I'm always talking about veganism and I don't even bring it up. It's like... People always ask you. They're <laughs> yeah, all interested. Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny. So it's it's great to be able to have these conversations with a, with a, uh, a cool head and, you know, just be able to discuss... Um, your own journey with it. Yeah, I feel that uh, so many plant-based or vegans, they're always going to be angry at the start and then, you know, eventually it'll just simmer down a bit and you can just lead by example mm. and just cook the beautiful food, take that those two big lovely dishes to the barbecue and watch everybody love it, yeah, you know, and I mean, then want huge. the recipe and, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's cool. I mean, it's, it's about creating awareness and yeah. I'm doing it in a cool, calm and collected way. I love it. Mm. So maybe we can have a little chat about more the, the, the food prep side of things yeah. as to how you actually create some of these meals. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, like I said before, you know, for a lot of people, it's just it's foreign language. Um, you know, they don't know quite what to add to a meal to actually give it some flavor. Yeah. Um, to, you know, to give it something that will actually – you know, help them to go back and eat it again. Like you said, you've got repeat customers because your, t- your meals actually taste good, but if they want to do it for themselves, what would you say the fundamentals are of making a tasty plant-based meal? Like what do we need to include? Uh, definitely fresh herbs and mm-hmm. spices. Yep. Everything that you'd marinate meat in, yeah, but like plants. So fresh herbs, spices, um, tex- different textures are good, Um when you start cooking vegan food and you start eating it, you'll feel so nicely full afterwards with lots of energy. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel everything. You just feel light and um, got so much buoyancy. You can bounce around. It's it's cool. So once you start feeling that, then you'll love it. Um, yeah, and I feel like prepping everything, prepping everything first and having it all prepped is good. Like it's going to make it easy. Um Makes it easier to cook with, and then if you need to add a few things and taste as you go, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm. So, so, so maybe for someone who's like, maybe because I have a lot of friends, um, and then people who just contact me who are like they they don't they only cook because it's a necessity, right? Yeah. They've mostly had meals done for them, and probably a lot of them are your target market too, because then they can just you know purchase a pre-made meal and mm-hmm. then have it there for them. 
um, especially when times are busy. But I think especially during lockdown, you know, and then everyone's having to cook for themselves for the first time. It's like, what do I cook? How do I cook? And then most people just resort. I think a lot of people just, and I think this is a massive issue, just resort to just having some processed rubbish that's like literally, hey, I'm going to have um, some like heat and eat hot chips with, you know, like a... I don't know, like baked beans or like whatever, just random things put together or just, you know, toasted sandwiches or just super, super simple things. But yeah, I mean, how do you think, what would be the steps for those people to maybe cook something super simple? Um, like how do we, you know, put together some some different ingredients to actually put together a decent, like actually healthy meal for them? So I would start, definitely start, um Getting excited about new recipes, um, swapping out ingredients that you would usually do dairy and meat, mm -hmm. just take them out or swap them over for a plant-based alternative. Google helped me. Someone not trained, Google helped me with everything. So I was like, what is the vegan version of macaroni cheese? And then it's like, okay, cool, almond milk, nutritional yeast, um, start collecting those ingredients and having them in the pantry because mm. once your pantry is stocked it's so simple you 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 know you know what you're doing you just grab everything that's accessible um and then yeah even if you're starting with one meal a week um like a meatless monday mm -hmm. uh all of the meatless monday recipes that we post up on the website um are, are super easy super cool. easy super simple super affordable five ingredients yeah, you know yeah. um and then, like I said, prep everything, chop everything up, grate everything, have it ready. And then when it's time to cook, you're not trying to catch up and do other things and read the full recipe first. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> Mum awesome. Mum taught me that. Oh, so, good. <laughs> so many times I've been caught out and I'm supposed to like, you know, bake something first or ah, do something, read the full recipe. Um, and then, yeah, just get excited about how good you're going to feel and yeah yeah i think it's so essential to yeah definitely have those ingredients like do a shop most people are time starved they come home they got no time they want to put some put something together really quick yeah under half an hour yeah like like you said less ingredients yeah um and just having things that will like it needs to be simple it needs to be nutritious but it needs to be um yeah, but, you know, it needs to be tasteful. Like it needs to actually have some flavor, right? Definitely, which is your herbs and your spices. Um, and make like five portions and mm -hmm. freeze down four, yeah. and then prep. This is why you know I'm yeah. so passionate about my business because I am a girl on the go. I yeah. am so busy, and I need to have prepped meals. And there's nothing like over in the UK. There was heaps of places of you could course. stop yes. and get like yummy meals, and there's just not nothing like it here. Yeah. And so, yeah, so if you can prep yourself and you'll, you'll love doing it, you'll love, um, you know, if on the Sunday getting all your ingredients and then having a glass of wine in the kitchen yeah. and doing some cooking. Uh, and if it's something very brand new for you, you have the music on and That's everything. Right. It's, it's, it's so um, rewarding cooking a delicious meal and then eating it yeah. or even sharing it with yeah. someone is so cool. But yeah, herb spices, Google. Cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, I think, I think that's a great point. Important. I was just making an event of it. Like I do mm. exactly that. If I'm prepping food for a week, is like Sunday, Arvo, or whatever. Yeah. It's like I'll get some music on and I'll just go for it and yeah. have some fun with it. And it, it, you don't, you know, you don't, you kind of look forward to it. You know, you don't, you're not like, oh, I have to go and do this meal prep now. I think a lot of people just put it off, put it off, put it off, and never do it. Yeah. And then it comes to Monday night and they're like, I've got no food. Like, exactly, you know. exactly. Um, Definitely, yeah, and it's like a one-man wolf pack party, and yeah, totally. it's cool. <laughs> I love that. What's like the process for you guys now when you're actually coming up with these meals or like new recipes or how you're actually putting together, you know, because you guys are pumping out a lot of meals now in, in the kitchen. Is there like a – obviously, you have to have a system in place. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. We um, So we will cook a meal, freeze it down, reheat it, find mm. the best way to reheat it, try it as a uh, leadership team that we have, cool. uh, and then decide whether we want to put it on the menu or not. Uh, and it works well. But when you are working with vegetables, it is sweet. You know what freezes down well. You know – 
um, what will go together. Well, this is in the prep kitchen. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, minimal cleanup, no cross contamination. Like, don't have to worry about any of that yeah, stuff. It's so true. Um, yeah, so we do, yeah, and we write stuff down, like, with bullet points of um, how we feel, taste, textures, all of that. Um, we didn't actually do that for a long time. We just kind of cooked and we are like, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. But now that we're growing, it's yeah. very important that we do this. We have to get HACCP plans up, um, you know, all of that sort of stuff. You've got to make sure everything's recorded properly. Um, when cooking, temperatures still have to be at the right wow. – uh, yeah, you've got to cook everything to the right temperature and all of that stuff. But, you know, we've been doing that for a long time, so okay. we're, we're, we're quite good at that. Yeah. But as we grow and there's going to be – teams under us we've got to make sure that we implement that throughout all of prep for sure yeah yeah there's a, there's a whole food industry is a whole another world in terms of like mm-hmm. doing it by the book right oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> and ministry of primary industries are pretty intense but yeah, yeah but once you just do it over and over and over at first you're like oh my god especially freezing food because right. if you don't cook it properly and somebody else doesn't reheat it properly you could get someone sick someone oh, elderly yeah. pregnant you know so you've got to make sure you're doing it right um but that was all part of you know we're coming up to our two-year birthday wow and yeah we've learned a lot in that time and yeah we're, i feel like we're smashing it so yeah. it's cool i love that it's mm. super cool and i've had a bunch of your fitness packs um yeah. as well and, and they and i love them they help me out heaps and i just heat them and go and it's so cool um and i think one of the biggest things i've noticed with food recently when i go out to eat at a restaurant and i'm like and i I kind of realized like what actually makes a really good meal. And I think a lot of the time it's texture, like having specific different textures within a meal that give you like different uh, sensations when you eat it. So yeah, there's so many people like that. And I am so glad that Dan is part of prep because he's a textures boy. Right, he's so Candace and me, we're Cancerians. We're like, oh yeah, sweet mash it all up, <laughs> eat it, yum. You know, like it. eat it like yogurt, don't even chew. Um, whereas uh, whereas Dan's just like, oh, it's not enough textures. Gotcha. And like yeah. that is key goal to have him, um, you know, be the head chef and yep. – and, and have yeah because like you said you want to go somewhere where it's different textures yeah. and people will think that um people are totally going to think that you know if you're just cooking vegetables it's all going to be one texture but no yeah yeah sorry that's the um alarm that's not my truck right? <laughs> no 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 okay, it's just cool. dad's got home <laughs> uh, um, someone's come up the driveway oh there's the alarm <laughs> yeah. that, you know someone's yeah, to the richard's in. retreat I love that. <laughs> yeah that's really good yeah um so where you guys going in future like with prep like what's going on oh it's so exciting okay so um so we obviously want to provide more education uh like we don't want to be the number one or anything like that we want to be a one-stop shop for recipes reviews of places to go um to go and get food you know uh, so people know other places they can go and get plant-based food um cooking tutorials i love doing that that's cool. yeah that's why i'm gonna get the little tripod where the phone follows yeah, you right. yeah uh we want to obviously make so many plant-based meals and have everybody try prep or yeah. know who prep is um it was brilliant going on tv uh i was on the breakfast show uh, uh yeah. just before lockdown um so that was really cool cool uh because, yeah, so many people were messaging and like, oh, my gosh, you know, so I'd love to do that again. Um, yeah, it's always good going in the newspaper as well and um, getting articles written about you and stuff. But um, we've got lots of uh, marketing campaigns, collaborating uh, with other like-minded businesses, okay. um, which is cool. It's exciting for them. It's exciting for us. Uh, and, yeah, we, we even want to do like even possibly like cooking nights where it can be ex- exclusive, That's like a really few cool. people can yes. come and um, Dan and me can be cooking and um, teach people because we want yeah. to just, we want to create a movement. It's about educating everyone, you know. It's not about selling the most meals. It's yeah. it's it's about everybody feeling good, like, like, like it was from the very start, everyone feeling good from the inside out yeah mm. that needs to happen yeah it's, it's happening yeah. it is happening yeah. yeah i often i've often gone online and tried to find like um 
even like just one night cooking courses that I can give as vouchers, like as in like a vegan cooking course. Yeah. Oh, that's um, a good idea. Boom. Write that down. Like yeah. Yeah, there you go. yeah. Um, you know, just as a, a gift as a gift for somebody and say, because I, I love the idea of going and doing like a, a fun night out, but you're kind of, you're involved and it's something practical. Um, and you're learning at the same time, learning. and you're gonna meet some cool people too. So, yeah. um, I think and you get to idea. eat good food and take it home, and yeah, it'd be good for date nights and yeah, stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's something like that you're doing together, and you know, like I said, like with oh, I didn't even say this. So with prep, there was a gap in the market, obviously, and there's nothing like that for mm. you know going and doing cooking nights. Yeah. Or if there is, I don't really know about it. I think there's a few places that do it, but it's predominantly like vegetarian. Yeah, um, yeah, or like well they have to you know it's not vegetarian they're like oh we can make it vegetarian it's like you know yeah i think people get scared to do to start plant-based mm, businesses because mm. they fear that um it's not going to be much uh business yeah but prep thriving now. yeah there's like, a massive because demand. yeah because meat eaters do want to eat more plants as well yeah. and you know that is the target market that aren't be, isn't being focused on yeah it just happened naturally for me to do that yeah you know? i so, think that's super cool that you're not specifically just focusing on like vegans well you can't you make no money yeah yeah <laughs> and it's, it's actually an interesting discussion because i was talking this about this this morning with a client about where all the vegan restaurants are in auckland yeah and it's like all in the city like where i'm out out east there's nothing there's zero um there's a couple of like little places that might do like vegan scones or something but yeah it's it's all in the city because that's where the people are right or that's where they converge so you know that's how you're going to actually keep a business alive yeah um but that's only going to change over time it is going to change it's definitely going to change um i went to a place well that was was greyland so that's still in a city but i had no idea that they were vegan and vegetarian i went the other morning and i was like oh my god i got a little rat posted it up about them Uh oh cool so yeah what was the spot uh it's uh the postal service uh, which is oh, in Greenland. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, just down from Tart Bakery. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I went in and I was like, oh, is that vegetarian or vegan? She was like, everything's here, vegetarian or vegan. I was like, I didn't even know. You're like, whoa. So, yeah. I, I love that. I love those surprise ones. Yeah. It's so good. I'm so excited. Yeah. And like, I put a little post up saying, I had no idea. This is so cool. And there's 5K people that see that, you know, yeah. might plant a little seed for someone else, you know, in the suburbs to start yeah. a um, fully vegan or vegetarian um, business. That's super cool. So what would be your favorite restaurant in Auckland? I know you've probably got a ton of Melbourne and maybe London as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, so many. Um, Kaira, Kairoha Vegan Cafe. Oh yeah, is, you love that yeah. spot. Yeah. Yes. I remember I bumped into yes. you on your birthday. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I love um, that spot. Yeah. So I love Kairoha. Um I love uh, Yeah, I just I love Kairoha and then I jump on Happy Cow uh-huh. and then I'll just try all new other places, which is really cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. When people ask me, I just tell them Kairoha because, you know, she, they influence me when it comes to vegan cheeses and right. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm. That's super cool. Mm. Um, and for the listeners, if you don't know what Happy Cow is, it's an app where you can go and find the restaurants in your area that are vegan, vegetarian. Yeah. You'll be so anywhere good. in the world. You open up the app and it'll tell you where the vegan places are, the vegetarian places and the places with vegan and vegetarian options. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. I was just down in Topor uh-huh. and I used it and we went to Cafe Baku and oh, it was cool. so good. I got the vegan Buddha bowl. Oh, right. We went there like two mornings in a row. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I used it all through South Island when I was traveling around and yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to getting over to London and it is going to blow yeah. up. <laughs> Honestly, it's so good. I think there was only one place I was in Menorca and I opened it up and there's nothing. I was oh, like, no way. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's it. yeah, for yeah, sure. A little Spanish island. Yeah, but. no, there's oh, there's so many good spots. I need to get back to Kyoto Heart actually. Yeah. Now that the um the lockdown's lifted, I'm like, oh, I've got so many spots I want to get to. Yeah, Ponsonby Food Court as well. Oh, yeah. I'll go there like five nights a week. <laughs> <laughs> really? Not really. I guess, it's like, and it's probably cheaper too. It's and it's cheap. like, yeah. It's cool. There's so many options. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, no, cool. Um, okay, three ingredients that you can't live without when it comes to cooking: nutritional yeast, mm-hmm. potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's such a Kiwi answer. <laughs> uh, and I want to say uh, Himalayan pink rock salt. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, Mum actually brought us up with no salt on the table, uh-huh. no salt. So I've never added salt to. I've never added, got a meal and added salt. Gotcha. Ever. That's yeah. like foreign. It's just 
in the cooking in the cooking yeah. just a little bit and mm-hmm. it, it, it's yeah i've learned to really enhance his flavors yeah for sure yeah yeah no that's really cool so that's obviously showing that i'm totally not trained in any yeah. way yeah. <laughs> I'm just like potatoes. Well, i mean i learned a ton from um i was given the my food bag plant-based yeah. box recently oh yeah i got cool. given like two weeks and I learned a lot, I and mean, even when I did this in a couple of years ago as well, I learned a lot just from like following the process of like, oh, add salt here or add pepper here um, because it does enhance the flavors as you're cooking. Yeah, you yeah. Know. See, I didn't even know that. Yet. Yeah. Dan knows all of that. Yeah. That just comes naturally to him. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. I'm going to have to get it. Yeah. I'll get it and give it a go. It's just got like the, I think for myself and like because um, – uh, someone gave it to my dad, I think, for his birthday, like gave him the food box and he doesn't cook, right? Yeah. So, but now that's his thing. He's like getting home early from work to get his like cooking on and because it's following the steps and uh. I'm the same. I need that structure. I'm like, I need step one. I need like, you know. See, I love that. I love that because I love cooking so much and yeah, if it's foreign to you, you automatically don't want to do it. But then something like that yeah. is going to teach you how to do it yeah and then you can uh find that passion in you that is so cool yeah that's really that's cool. rad hey mm. all right last question for you nat um the fav- your most favorite meal you've ever cooked it's probably a tough question um mashed potato and gravy with peas yeah <laughs> my goal when i was a kid was to eat a bucket full of mashed potato dad still says have you achieved your goal and i'm just like uh, not yet but not because quite. it's a challenge or because you like peas so much well because i love mashed potatoes so much uh-huh. uh and you know i'm not that into textures i'm just okay. like sweet you just smell, um, yeah yeah, I even have white bread and like make little fold overs. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a classic meal. Yeah, it's cool. You do well in, in England, like Yeah, just, I did, yeah. yeah. I mean I lived over you here. You have the mushy peas, they're all about the mushy peas yeah. too. Um we're actually gonna bring bangers and mash onto the um onto the menu very it. shortly because it's it. winter warmer. Uh, and we've got Dan cooking it, so it's just gonna be off its head. Oh, so yeah. Good. Yeah. No, that's a classic as well. Mm. Awesome. Hey, well, do you want to finish up and, and plug everything you want, like plug the, the gram and everything like that? Cool. Okay, so obviously the company is Prep Plant Based Meals. Um, the website is www.prepplantbasedmeals.co.nz. Uh, on the website, there's so many different recipes. There's obviously all of our um, meals that we do, our breakfast burritos, um, uh, lots of information. It's really cool. Uh the, if you join the mailing list, uh, you'll get the weekly review of where Candace and me go, and so you'll be able to find out other places you can go to, uh, what other cool, exciting things is happening with the prep team, where we're delivering to next, because obviously we deliver Auckland-wide um, and Tauranga, Hamilton, and surrounding areas once a month, and Waiheke Island, so that's coming up All right. uh, next. Uh, the next delivery day is the 3rd of June. So that's really cool. It's just really good to be on that mailing list and just, you know, yeah. uh, learn so much. Uh, and the Instagram, Prep Plant Based Meals, easy. Yeah. And same as the Facebook. Yeah, it's cool. It's good. Perfect. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thanks. I'll link all those uh, in the show notes for everybody to find them. Um, but yeah, awesome conversation. It's just great to hear somebody's journey through this and, and see, you know, what you're doing in the industry and, and within Auckland and New Zealand, um, making some real positive change for people. And I love it. Cool. Thanks, Jax. <laughs> you man. Alrighty, episode 12, done and dusted. Super cool chat there with Nat. I just want to reiterate the, the importance of making meal prep and food prep a fun event for you you know get in the kitchen put some music on put your favorite jam on um you know get amongst it have some fun with it you know it should be something that you can enjoy maybe even listen to a podcast maybe listen to this one while you do it all that kind of stuff to make it as easy as possible take away as many barriers as you can from doing that specific task as i mentioned at the start guys really cool opportunity for you to go and check out nat in the kitchen we did a tofu cooking tutorial five ingredient crispy tofu uh myself as the handyman in the video didn't really do a whole lot so you can go check out me uh get my hands dirty in the kitchen as well but super simple recipe that you can follow along with um it is up on youtube now and it will be on instagram as well so check that out let me know how you find it and if you do cook that recipe let me know tag me i'd love to see it as always guys 
be sure to leave us a review. Please do. That would be greatly helpful. And jump on our Instagram. That's where I'm most active and we can hang out and chat. I think we're starting to create a cool little community there where, you know, people from around the world who are very like-minded can connect and talk about similar things and, you know, just create that sort of positive change in this world. Hope wherever you are, you're doing well, you're healthy, you're training hard, and we're going to see you in episode 13. See you guys.